Hey campers and welcome to this Dueling Rabbits Productions video coming to you from the Draw Loom Room at Bevstuga Weaving School in sunny Shelburne, Massachusetts. Today we're going to talk about something that I think is pretty exciting, shaded satin on the draw loom. If you are new to this subject, please review my earlier video, Satin Damask Tie-Ups for the Draw Loom, before delving into this somewhat more advanced topic with me now. I'll still be here when you get back. In this video, we're going to address three burning questions. What is shaded satin? How can we weave it on the draw loom? And what does the cloth look like when we're done? We'll start by examining where the inspiration for this project came from. A few years ago, I was lucky enough to attend a week-long class at Praxis Fiber Workshop where I played around with the creation of damask on a TC2 thread control loom. This cloth was the culmination of my experiments. It was woven on a black warp with one shuttle of gold-colored weft. This is the side that faced down when I was weaving, and this is the side that faced up. The pattern is quite complicated looking and has a lot of texture to it. This is because, unlike damask as typically woven on a draw loom, the TC2 allows for many different woven structures to be built up on the cloth. Here, for example, we see a weft effect area that is almost entirely gold. This is 1-7 satin, where the weft travels under one warp end and then over seven, and that single interlacement is almost entirely obscured by the long weft floats. Here, in this area of twill variant, more black warp is showing because the weft is traveling under one warp end and over two. As a result, the interlacements are closer together and we see both warp and weft more clearly. As we move from area to area, we can see how the evolving interlacements of warp and weft change the dominance of gold over black, until we get to the petals of this flower, where this side of the cloth shows black warp effect 7-1 satin. It's totally cool. And because many of these shadings are based on units of 8N satin, common in double harness weaving, I have long wondered how such structures could be adapted to create simple shading on the draw loom. Happily, the seeds for a suitable approach are laid out in the woven pixel. Check it out on handweaving.net if you've not already done so. It's a great read. In Chapter 7, 8N satin is discussed at some length with lots of helpful diagrams. In these representations, where black squares are raised warp ends, we see how an 8 end unit can be interlaced in different ways to show more or less warp and weft for a variety of effects. Taken together, these effects are called shaded satins. I love how logical they are. Let's take a closer look at this first box. It shows a weft effect 8 end satin unit, the sort we might use as ground cloth on our draw loom. To make my draw loom conversion easier later on, I'm going to think about this square as a tie-up diagram, where the black squares represent connections to rising shafts. If my warp is gray and my weft is orange, the associated woven unit will look like this, a 1-7 satin with long 7-end orange weft floats interrupted by a single gray interlacement. If we look carefully, we can see our woven unit has a satin counter of 3. Let's look at the next one. Again, we'll think about it as a tie-up box. On each treadle, a new connection has been added directly behind each existing one, thus raising eight more warp ends in every unit. Our new woven unit looks like this, with our weft floats now only six ends long instead of seven. We no longer have a true satin because we're breaking our satin counter rules, but who cares? Visually, we have added more gray and reduced the amount of orange, in our unit. Now we add eight more raised warp ends, so that we have three in a row instead of two. Step by step, our cloth is becoming less weft effect and more warp effect. Each time we do this, we shorten the weft floats by one end on this side of the cloth, and more warp ends are visible in each unit. Finally, we have a completely warp effect unit in 7-1 satin, which is the opposite of our starting point. If we stack these units and weave them together, this is what we get, a gradual shading from predominantly orange to predominantly gray cloth. 
Can you see how this strategy might be adapted for the draw loom? I'm sure there are lots of ways to do it, but I decided to flip the whole production upside down and progressively add tie-ups to my upper lambs so that my pattern units evolved from Warp Effect 7-1 Satin to Weft Effect 2-6 Satin. There were a few hiccups along the way, but we got it working, and I'm excited to share how. First, let's remind ourselves what a draw loom tie-up for 8 n Satin Damask might look like. Since the loom has a countermarch, our circles indicate rising shed tie-ups on our lower lambs. There are eight of them, following the satin counter rules and giving our weft effect 1-7 satin ground. Our black squares represent the sinking shed tie-ups on our upper lambs. These eight connections give us our 7-1 satin pattern units. The two units look like this, and they are the only choices available with this tie-up. The result is classic 8-end satin damask, a two-tone textile with clear areas of ground and pattern. But what if we change the tie-ups for our pattern units in a variation of the scheme laid out in the woven pixel? My heart beats a bit faster at the very thought. Eager to get going, I've added the first additional sinking shaft to each of my treadles. Each connection appears below the black square that's already there. Works great here and here but soon I get into all sorts of grief. My additional tie-ups start to interfere with the connections to my lower lambs, as they do here. Since I can't have ends rising and sinking at the same time, I have to come up with a different starting tie-up for my pattern units. The tie-up diagram on the right shows what I came up with. The ground cloth tie-ups on my lower lambs remain unchanged, as you can see. Then, for each ground shaft being lifted, I added a sinking connection to the shaft immediately in front. The cost of this change was that I had to break a few rules concerning ideal interlacements for damask pattern units and allow for fewer clean cuts in my designs. I decided this was probably not a bad thing considering my ultimate goal and proceeded with my plan guilt-free. From my new starting point, I was able to add one adjacent connection to each treadle for each iteration of my pattern structure. Here, for example, three adjacent pattern ends are lowered for every pick, giving me three end weft floats in my pattern units. The next tie-up gives me an evenly distributed 4-4 structure. Now, my pattern units start to become weft effect with five end weft floats in every pick. Using the sixth tie-up, my pattern units will have a weft dominant 2-6 interlacement. Finally, I end up with a true 1-7 satin, which is pretty much identical to the interlacement of my ground units. My fiberworks drawdown looked like this. Here is my orange 1-7 satin ground cloth woven as background on the side of the cloth facing up. Here is my gray row of Warp Effect 7-1 satin pattern units pretty much as you'd see in any 8N satin damask. Next, a row of 6-2 pattern units. After that, a row of 5-3 pattern units, and so on, until our pattern morphs into ground. Do you think it worked in practice? Let's find out. Here's the setup on the shaft draw loom as configured for Vevstuga's introductory class, Draw Loom ABC. Since we're weaving 8N satin, we have eight ground shafts directly behind the beater. They are threaded straight. Behind these are 41 pattern shafts with the leashes arranged in a single point. Each leash consists of two mallions threaded with four ends each. This allows patterns to be woven using half units, although full eight end units were used for this project. Under normal circumstances, our lower tie ups look like this. Our lower lambs are tied up for our ground cloth one connection each per shaft and treadle. Our upper lambs are tied up like this, again, one connection each per shaft and treadle. But because collisions, we are going to change the tie-ups to the upper lambs. This will change the appearance of our pattern units slightly, but will make our shaded satin progression possible, as we saw earlier. Here's the new setup. 
Our connections on the upper lamps have been changed for the new scheme. We use black Texol for these because it helps draw loom students when they're messing with tie-ups. Our connections on the lower lambs for the ground cloth are unchanged. We're going to ignore these cords at the ends of our upper lambs. They're connected to a leveling treadle, which I will discuss in a future video. We start as usual. I select the pattern shafts for the first row of my design and treadle my eight picks. I repeat the process a few more times until I have woven the first three rows of my pattern. You can see my ground cloth in 1-7 weft effect ground and the first rows of my design woven in 7-1 warp effect gray pattern. So far so good, but now I want to start my shading. I scurry back to my lambs and consult my new tie-up diagram. I see I must connect one additional shaft to each treadle via its upper lamb. This will lower two ends for every pattern unit pick, rather than just one. This is the result after I've woven a few more rows with my new tie-up. Down at the bottom is my 7-1 satin. But here is my 6-2 satin. The red weft is ever so slightly more visible because it is now skimming over two warp ends at a time instead of just one. It's so cool I have to pinch myself. Guess what I do next? I add another sinking connection to each of my treadles. Now, everywhere I weave a pattern unit, the weft will skim over three warp ends at a time instead of two. I've got three different shades in my pattern already and I think the effect is awesome. Totally worth the bother of crawling under the loom every five minutes. Speaking of which, here I am again. Are you seeing the routine here? Eight more connections get added to my upper lambs, and I weave some more. It looks cooler and cooler. Visually, our 4-4 structure shows equal amounts of our two colors on both sides of the cloth. Although our eye can still discern the pattern units, they are neither truly warped or weft effect. Back to my tie-ups, which, to be honest, are starting to get a bit top-heavy. But the sheds are weavable if careful attention is given to the lengths of the new cords, such that the floor of the sinking shed meets the ground ends when they rest at neutral. Treadling does take a bit more effort than usual, but I'm sure you'll agree that is a small price to pay for art. My final tie-up is for 2-6 satin, where my weft floats in each pattern unit are 6 ends long. More than this, and my pattern units would almost disappear completely, which is an effect I did not care for with this design. When I'd worked my way up to the tippy tip of my pyramid, the only thing for it was to reverse my way out again, pulling out cords with gay abandon after every few rows until all I had left was my original damask tie-up. I have to say that by the end of the experiment, I was getting much faster at the tie-ups and changes did not feel nearly so onerous. The loom worked well and my sheds were completely satisfactory. As an added bonus, I got a lot of exercise hopping up and down from the bench and scrabbling around on the floor, hunting for arrow pegs and treadle cords. I think this technique has lots of potential for draw loom weavers seeking to go above and beyond, and I hope you'll try it, or some variation, in your own practice. Let me know if you do, and as always, thank you so much for watching.